Hey all, Times here, back playing some more Planet Zero, and I'm back in Zimba Zoo. Look at the little, little meeting that's going on between these three warthogs. What do you think they're scheming about? Well, they appear to be scheming about making mud. That one's not having any of it. Anyway, so, we're back in Zimba today. Doing some stubborn things. Um, what we're going to be doing is... So we added, uh, this last episode, we added the restaurant and the... the uh, warthog stuff and then we've got some bits and pieces back there that we started doing that and you can't see that way um, and we're going to be working on this a bit further on this section down here so this is just out from the the entrance plaza so in the last episode you'll have seen me add a bunch of details and things here so I did the maps in uh, and then I did this kind of little uh, riverside walkway section with this kind of like little decorative bits um, and then there's kind of nothing going on down there at the moment so what we're going to be doing is adding some cranes in here i put these little placeholder guys in a while ago but now we have them in the actual game so let's jump on into the speed build So, first things first, I needed to take all the water out. So, we stripped all the water out. You can see I've already placed down a bunch of uh, the cranes there. Just to get a sense of the space, I always find that's helpful just to see how they can kind of move around and things. So, you'll notice I've taken all the water out. I have put a glass barrier around the edge. It just gives you a bit more control uh, rather than using the actual terrain uh, because I wanted the cranes to be able to walk around because obviously they are a wading bird. I wanted them to, to kind of walk around a bit more and then I wanted them to kind of make sure I've got them in a bunch of places throughout the habitat. So yeah, all of that is underwater work and then I flood it all. So it kind of all gets hidden. Um, and then I wanted one significant sort of focal point. Actually, I think I did this a couple of times. I think I changed this a bit because this is in a slightly different place from when I, um, yeah, when, what I'm showing here in the speed build is in a slightly different place to what we actually ended up with. So I put this sort of wading feeder pool in there. Um, there's me kind of lowering the, the, the fence line back again. Obviously, if you make sure you can, because you, you can lower that fence line enough to hide it away, you know, you'll see I've got that, that barrier is doing all the work. And so it's not flooded underneath the path and things there. There's a few reasons why you do that. Um, mostly just it makes it a bit easier if you have to um, take all the water out again if you just have that barrier you just bring that barrier back up and then you can take the water out and adjust it so this is me playing with the actual you'll have seen this on the thumbnail but this is the actual net structure i went through a few prototypes of this i thought i'd just include this again i always think it's kind of handy for people to see um you know how i've kind of gone through this this process there's a lot of different episodes Oh, sorry, there's, there, there is a lot of different steps, um, hence the gap between, the significant gap between the episodes, because this took me a long time to get right. You can see I'm using the mud pillar trick there, and I just kept trying to get this right. I wanted it to feel like a kind of suspended, almost like a hanging net. Um, and But the trouble with that is you want some, you want some sort of gather points, you want some swag, if that makes sense. So you want some kind of, some of the curvature of it. You can see here, I've, I mean, this is me showing you the method, but I actually go back and change it completely because the kind of drop that I've got here, the curvature, you can see from each of those pieces, it's a little bit too dramatic. It's a little bit over the top. It's a little bit, kind of a little bit too much. So there's lots and lots of this, of me going backwards and forwards and experimenting and just tweaking this. Obviously, if you use that rotation method, obviously the, the trick to doing that is to have some sort of central point, like a mud pillar is great, uh, and then you copy it round. And obviously, as you're doing that, you're kind of making sure that you keep everything symmetrical and that when you come to finish it, you just spin the whole thing around. So here you see me, as I said, this is the first prototype of it. You can see it's got that kind of dish-like quality. It's not quite right. Um, and again, this is me just testing to see how I can do it. Um, and we ended up this kind of weird, almost like a skirt shape, but then realised, well, I needed I needed it to reach further than that. I needed it to get down to the actual position. So this was 
I mean, just kind of looking at size, I mean, there's a lot of work in that already, but there's a lot, there's, that's largely me just kind of sussing out sizes and layouts here. Could I do two peaks? Then we're back into the actual edit. So you can see I've taken it all back out now and I've realised that I've got too much of a, too much of a curve. It's too much of a dramatic curve. So I decided to kind of elongate one of these sections, make the curve not quite as a dramatic. So I'm back to kind of square one. Um, and so, yeah, just building out these pieces. This is actually this cable lighting piece. It's one, I think one of the narrowest pieces we've got in the game. Really good for this sort of thing. Um, one trick I would say when you're doing stuff like this, and I've noticed this a few times when I've been building, is try not to go for absolute black. Um, it's very rare, especially for something that's outside, that, that you'd see a colour that would be really, really black. So that looks like it's black. And obviously it's a black colour, but it's not 100% black because you'll find that 100% black often looks a little bit too glossy, a little bit too new. Um, and if you kind of walk around your world, you won't very often see, especially in public spaces, things that are really, really kind of black. They'll often be slightly more grey. Uh, so yeah, just a quick tip there just for, the yeah, just for kind of weathering things. Lots of this process, lots of these adjustments as ever you'll see me just do a, a short stint of this but i'm trying to get this single section right this is the key with anything that's like a dome structure once you get a single section right that's really the bulk of the work so here you see me doing some verticals i'm much happier now with the kind of gathering the swag um so you can see there's kind of a loop and then it looks like it's something that's been suspended obviously at this point i haven't got anything actually holding it up but that's the kind of next step so now we get into something that looks a little bit more like an alien but it's starting to come together so rotating this all round keep clicking on the wrong thing and then there's a little bit of a jump forward there because you can see i've added some some added some little sort of stanchion pieces some pieces that are going up that are holding that swagged section because you got to think how the things are getting hailed right so <laughs> you can see i've added a lot a bit 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 more detail the actual cranes are kind of hanging around in there most of this actual kind of foliage work was done uh in a previous episode uh so yeah there's not too much that i did that you didn't see in there there's a bit of there's a bit of detail in i've actually tried to thin this out a little bit so it's not quite so dense now we've got a kind of horizontal section. So I decided that I wanted, um, if you've seen one of the previous episodes, you'll see that there's actually a few different viewpoints into this area. So I decided that I wanted the cranes to occupy quite a large amount of this space. In the background, you can just see the little cafe there. So there's a path that leads up to the cafe. So there's actually a little viewpoint that overlooks into that. So I decided I wanted to have yeah, two different little sections um, for the for the cranes to shelter, uh, which we'll see me get to in a sec. So yeah, much more filled out now. And as you can see, I've added some some more supports in. Uh, we've got a central column now holding everything together. Again, lots. I mean, this all looks a bit weird when you've got all these mud pillars going on, but that is all fundamentally to help me do this this rotation. As you can see, I'm not having to line those up. I'm just rotating them around. There's a few places I did actually end up deciding to to kind of eyeball it into position just because it aesthetically looked like a um a good place to have it. Um and we, yeah, so we've got we end up with a really large structure. This episode is a bit weird. Um yeah, it's the normal sort of thing. It's gonna be the normal thing that we have a you know speed build here up the front and then a real time tour. So you'll see a bunch of details. However, I would caveat that with what I decided to do in this episode, oh, I just added a little bit of a kind of wear and tear here. This is supposed to be a bit that's been patched. Yeah, what I decided to do in this episode was split up. Um, I actually kind of ran off and did a huge, great big build that went alongside this. Um, and I decided that in order to get you guys an episode out at some point reasonably, I mean, it's obviously already quite a while since the last episode. But in order to get something done, I decided to cut this off. So you'll see a little bit towards the end of the speed build here, uh, which is an interior space, um, which is kind of you know, back, back stage, backstage area for the keepers and things. 
that's an interior space that we won't see on the real time tour. And the reason why I've done that is because it's actually an interior space that is part of a building that isn't finished yet and is actually in the next episode. I hope that makes sense. It may not make sense. Who knows? In my brain place, it makes sense. So yeah, thinning out a bit. You can see I've dropped in the shelter there. So that's actually the shelter that I used for the flamingos. So now we're just thinning out a little bit of this foliage so that we can get the keeper over there because I wanted the keeper to get to, to get to this position. You can see we've got like a little jetty section. At the moment, there's no there's no kind of gate uh going on well no proper gate going on for the for the keepers to get in so the keepers are going to come in from this position onto this little jetty section so we need to be able to get them over to the, the shelter over there so just a little gangplank if you didn't realize this keepers inside habitats will just traverse over anything you give them to walk over and actually it's pretty generous it's pretty kind to you about how they do this so you don't have to give them loads of space they're pretty pretty good at just kind of making their way over i think the guy and we'll probably see this when we do the real time tour but my keeper does sometimes occasionally dip his feet in the water as he's going over i don't know if he does that for just for funsies or what but uh yeah he gets over there anyway so now we're adding this is a little bit rough and ready this is not my my best build but as you'll see wanted something kind of temporary you can see the gate there you can see a little um the, the the boat so the boat is something that's going to come in or the boat station it's going to be something that comes in in the next episode of zimba i think in the next episode anyway who knows you know, it's all a bit crazy in, in toves land um but yeah so this is i didn't spend too long on this building because i knew it was going to be butting right up against another building so as i said this is kind of a bit of a temporary structure actually isn't too bad by the time i finish with it in this episode but it might get redone in the future we shall see so and actually putting in some of these putting in some of these roof pieces pretty simple it's basically just be a concrete building what i wanted to make sure i keep true to in zimba is it's supposed to be a fairly modern zoo um, i don't want it to be too twee i don't want it to be too kind of over themed african you know everything having a a wicker roof or a thatch roof because i think that just ends up looking a bit unrealistic so yeah i want some of these more slightly utilitarian functional builds concrete blocks and corrugated roofs and things but um yeah i played around just a little bit with the building structure and you'll see what i decide to do is using some slightly more interesting textures just to give it like a cladding so this is this is something that you kind of do really see in zoos that yeah, the building itself is built out of a material that's really kind of functional breeze block or whatever and then they just do something to hide and soften off the um the yeah the the, the, the view that faces the guests so that concrete side that we're seeing here never gets hidden but the guests guest facing parts have just got the you know the cladding or the that kind of um kind of foam mud texture so a bit of detail inside as you can see there's now a wall there uh, into a building that doesn't exist <laughs> so we just did a little bit of detail decided to put in some lights uh, realized that the ceiling is actually quite low that the cranes can fly and therefore i should make sure that the cranes can't burn themselves alive on the on the lights so just built this little this kind of cage thing around the lights i've done this a few times this is stuff you see in zoos um, to make sure that you know they can't the yeah, animals can't hurt themselves or can't do something uh, you know, can't attack the light for any reason just decided to give it a bit of detail a bit more of a, a kind of clumpy clumpy looking light copied that over and then i started to work on a door so there's a great there's a crane very very helpfully standing in the door there just to give me some scale and perspective and this is super simple so there's no gutter pieces this bracket in particular is really useful for this sort of stuff so obviously in context of it being vertical, that would look like a gutter, but hopefully it'll agree. But by the time I've finished with this this door, this looks more like a kind of rail system. Uh, so the door is supposed to just be kind of hanging off here. And then in theory, the keeper just comes in and pulls the door closed in the night uh, if they want to close in the cranes. And the cranes obviously do have the option to sleep over in the um, the other the other shelter as well. But the keeper has to come in through this route. For some reason, at this point, I had some weird 
weird issue going on with the color selector there. That top one, for some reason, I couldn't change the color. It changed to a really odd color. Fixed it at the end. So yeah, just adding a bit of chunkiness to this. Want it to feel like it's got a bit of um, robustness. Obviously, the bird's not like a monkey or anything. They're not going to be able to open this anyway, so it doesn't need any kind of anything too complicated. Just a just a bit of a kind of timber door. Yeah, these as I said, using these gutter pieces all the time, they're kind of so handy. Uh, it's just that classic thing when you get something new in Planet Zoo. That's like anything that's a new, like a small piece, just becomes such a vital piece of your your armory in any build. I find. Uh, so yeah, just putting that in, putting the door in. Very happy little keeper there. So yeah, here's a little sneak peek actually of the of this new building that's coming. So we're now. We're now kind of on the outside of the door. We've got this little corridor that I've created that's a utility corridor. This is the bit that I said you won't see in the real-time tour, unusually. Just a bit of detail and things. So we've got a, a keeper. I want to make sure that there's not too many places where the keepers have to go a long way in this zoo. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit of detail. I love this new house piece. Uh, that, that roof section is actually one of the uh eco pieces it's got a i think it's the i think it is the uh like live roof piece there's like a, a piece that's got kind of from grass roof and the underside of it has got a really good wooden texture so i've added this little utility cupboard in just decided this corridor needed something a little bit more and i had a bit of space to play with so uh creating a door as you do just so i could uh, have it open because sometimes people don't realize when there's a door there that actually you've done some work behind the door hey babes welcome back to the door so we're going to start off in the entrance plaza as we quite often do just making our way through and you'll notice you get straight away get a view of this new exhibit super early i guess we call this the avery Busy the Avery. It's quite a busy day in the zoo today. Lots of peeps in, milling about. But yeah, there's the first view of the Avery. Uh, I have added some more little details and things. Just a little few little splashes like this, this pebble pattern and things here and there. Just a bit more, just a bit more detail. You know me. There's never enough detail. So what we'll do is there's several different views into the habitat. Um, and as I said, there'll be, in the next episode, hopefully in the next episode, there'll be a bunch more stuff going on down there. So it won't look quite so incomplete. But um, I think we'll go we'll go up onto the onto this little river walk first. So the problem I've got at the moment um, is that there is no path up here. So I'm kind of just accepting the fact that the guests aren't going to go up here. Again may do something about that at some point in the future or i may not bother becoming progressively less and less bothered about what the guests are doing um, but yeah hopefully you think this has turned out all right as you can see everything is kind of looking like it's supported and we've got structural pillars and you know suspension beams and various different bits and pieces and i'm really happy now with the the kind of swagness to it if you can if you can call that thing as you see it's suspended by that central pillar and then it sags down and then it's held by this ring and then there's a support ring around the edge here uh, the thing that was really difficult actually the probably the biggest challenge as you can see is that there are parts of it that are symmetrical and then there are parts of it that are asymmetrical because you know, obviously this section it extends longer than the rest. It's a lot easier just to do a straight up dome, but when you do something that has a few little varieties and things, um, and I wanted it to, oh, hello, we're up on a bench. I wanted it to seem like it kind of fit in the space properly, uh, but also making sure that there was this separation barrier. Oh, excuse you. I've seen them doing that before. Seems to be enjoying the fountain. <laughs> Yeah, as I said, I wanted to make sure there was this separation so that, you know, fingers didn't get nipped and things. Uh, because they're a fairly big bird, the old cranes, so pecking through the bars is probably something that they they would do. I don't know how timid these guys are supposed to be in reality. But yeah, this is probably the closest point. This is probably the only point that was arguably a little bit close. 
Um, I did did add some little education screens and things in. That's a bit of foliage there that shouldn't be there. But if we make our way down, in fact, we'll go the other way first. So I can just show you the the other views in. If we just zoom down this way, up this path. So yeah, this is the path that goes up towards the warthog. So you can see there's a few. Oh, other little viewing spots here. So you've got a quite nice little little view in this way. Um, and you do get a little bit of a glimpse into the back of their habitat here, into the into the shelter. Kind of okay with that, I think. A lot of that backdrop is going to be kind of occupied visually at some point soon, so I'm not too worried about it. And then here is the other view. Get this slightly more... Again, another little view back into the you can see the keeper getting busy filling up the feeders and things down there so quite like that view again I kept try to make sure I kept this all kind of scruffy and don't want it to get too to have it look too kept um, I'm also slightly conscious of the fact that this is still a little bit jammed in I think as we get further away from the entrance things will get a little bit Oh, that's a really good place to do that mate a little bit less congested a little bit less busy uh, as we go further away from the entrance i think a little bit more space will be is required so thank you for your support lady and gentlemen so we'll head down this path this little side path on the river or of the of the pool yeah and they tend to hang out hang out here a lot as you can see that's there a little wading pool there we will go in in a second so i can show you the details and there'll be some fly arounds and things that you can see more deets um, i haven't actually seen the keeper come down this little walkway yet but they should be able to and they seem to be able to fill that that wading pool i think that's a change that was made I'm not sure when that was made but it used to be that keepers had to actually access the enrichment items and now they seem to be able to just as long as they can get into the habitat they seem to have to fit, fill it up so yeah quite happy with that little point you see them wading around in there quite a lot a little bit more detail there's the side of the entrance building so this is as i said it's going to look a bit weird because it's part of another building which is not complete so um i've what i've done is just kind of left this section and then this will all make sense in the next episode but yeah i did a bunch of details in here uh, we have a, a large keeper hut which will be incorporated into the building. Did some things like pipe work and stuff and just a few. I quite like this sort of part of the game. Adding these kind of clutter items in really, I think, does add some realism to it. So combination of things that I've made here. Um, so my little my little feeder pots and things or tubs. Uh, I made a little stand for the the uh clipboards this is from the amazing shifty uh if you haven't checked out shifty he's got a bunch of stuff on the workshop i think he streams on twitch as well um and yeah if you haven't seen these little kind of he's got two or three really amazing clutter packs um this is from the i think from the warehouse pack but yeah check, check him out on the workshop because he's got some really really useful stuff this is one of mine so this is a backstage like a fuse box sort of thing built that a while ago from missoula and then yeah just some pipes and and stuff just to just to give it a bit of clutter and then we have the oh but what am i standing on jumping up and down something we have this little this little kind of utility cupboard just for tools and things well this is my trouble whenever i'm it's never done it's never done if you're if you're someone who, like me who's a little bit of a perfectionist it's never finished <laughs> you're always noticing something you're like that shouldn't look like that so yeah just some tools hanging up on the on the shelves and things and the, some boxes and just again a little bit of backstage clutter well that's good timing so we'll go in after this lady yeah so kept this pretty basic in here as you saw just the I don't know why she dump, seems to dump a lot of it there. I think they do that. I think that's the behaviour that the keepers do when there are not enough feeders. Um, they dump stuff on the floor like that. But she's going off to do a, 
fill up the others. So I kept this pretty simple as, as you saw, just the lights, this this kind of fake roof, largely just to hide the fact that the um, the roof up there is actually a little bit messy, so I thought I'd hide it away. So yeah, I think this has turned out really good. Happy with the inside of it, certainly has the feel I wanted when I started off. Not any particular inspiration for this. Um, other than just kind of Avery's and things that I've seen probably in the in the real world. Oh, hello. So if we head on down here, I said I repurposed this from the um, the flamingo habitat. So I just thought I'd fold it in here. It's got a door that doesn't really go anywhere at the moment. That leaves the habitat, and then there's just a kind of that's still a bit scruffy back there. So yeah, you'll have to let me know what you think, guys. Um, I'm pretty happy with this so far. I'll show you from a kind of a flyover position. So yeah, Zimba's coming along. Um, Tigwadoo will be back as well. There is progress made on that. As I said, I've got uh, a few episodes that are kind of in the works. And I'm a little bit scattergun at the moment, as you can appreciate. Uh, yeah, sometimes in the summer it's a little bit harder to find the motivation to sit down and actually do some work, but hey ho, we're getting there, we're getting there. And yeah, I'm really enjoying this one so far. Do let me know, guys, which one, which animal you think you should would be uh, the next one to come along. Um, and don't forget to like and subscribe because, as I said, the episodes are super rare at the moment, <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully you're all right with that. But yeah, subscribe so you don't miss one when they randomly come out. Uh, at some point there will be a bit more of a, subske a schedule, but yeah, it's, uh, as I'm sure you can appreciate, creativity just comes and goes sometimes, and so I'm just a bit ad hoc on the on the play sessions. Thank you very much for watching, my name is Toves, and I will catch you on the next one. Take it easy.